Well, bam, the SLG Traction Tanto. So guys, what if I told you that you could get a knife from SLG, the same company that makes the knife that the Navy SEALs carry. It has a features a compound ground blade, a super deep carry pocket clip, very secure lock system on it. What if I told you you could get that for less than $20 with no compromises, with no concessions whatsoever? You'd call me crazy, right? And, and you'd be right. Uh, you know, obviously with anything that you get, there's going to be concessions. Um, I can say right away that, that this is enough I've actually had for a long time. And I can, I can recommend if you want a super cheap little budget knife that you can throw in a pack, a bag, it, it's a great option for that. And uh, go ahead and grab one. But if you want to watch on and see if the juice is worth the squeeze, let's check it out. Welcome to Average Gear Review, where the best gear is the gear you have on. And what is up guys, Average Gear Reviewer here, back with another one for you. Welcome to the channel, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first video, thanks so much for stopping by to watch one of my little videos. I really do appreciate it. If you're a returning viewer, great to see you again. Of course, in this video, like I said, we're taking a look at the SOG Traction Tanto. Um, I'm kind of continuing my walk down memory lane as I'm looking at all the knives that I've unboxed in order. This one was the next one up in line. And I actually was able to find um, when I was doing a little bit of research on it, like I always do on the knives before I do the videos, um, just to be a little more well informed, you know, so I can give you some technical specs and stuff. Um, I found out that they on Amazon, these are running less than $20 right now. If you click on the link that I have, um, I'll put it at the top of the screen here somewhere, but uh, you can get these for $18.89, less than $20. So um, I think it's a great deal. This is, um, I did an unboxing on that one and I'll put a link for it in the video um, at the top of the screen somewhere if you want to go back and watch that. Um, but when I did the unboxing, like I said, this is a, a knife that I'd had before. Um, this is one of the original EDC knives that I had, um, I had it years ago and, uh, it, it just, you know, before I even knew anything about knives and steel and handles or what features made a good knife. Um, I carried this for a long time and it worked really well for me. Um, I think it's a super great, like ultra budget option for a knife. So, um, let's get it over on the bench and we'll take a sort of take a deep dive into it. So we're here at the bench, um, taking a, just a top down look at it. Like I said before, this one's um, made by SOG. The Special Operations Group is what it's named after. If you're familiar with um, that unit out of Vietnam, they were a sort of special forces before there were really special forces. So um, th this company was named after them. And, um, you know, they are the ones who make the fixed blade knife that the SEALs carry, the Trident, I think. It is. It might be the pup. I know they make a, a seal. Oh, boy. I could be wrong on that. I know that they do make the uh, knife that the seals carry. I just can't think of the name of it. I think it's the seal, um, the SOG seal. And then there's like a pup. It's like a shorter version of it. But anyway, um, that's not this knife. And like I said, this one is a sub $20. So we're talking like ultra budget EDC knife. So again, like I said, there's always going to be compromises that you're going to have to make. Um, let me go over the, the pros of it first, because there are a lot of pros to this knife. Um, first off, I'm going to start off with the blade. To me, I, I like the, the recurve Tanto short, sort of shape to the blade. Um, it is very, very sharp. This part tends to pull material in, and then this part's very good for piercing. And you can see that the blade, um, let me see if I can get it up in here where you can see it. Um, it has a flat grind to the tip, but this part is hollow ground. So, and then even see on the spine, it has sort of like a forward. So it's more of a modern Tanto design than uh, like a traditional Tanto. So to me, it's like a recurved Tanto design. And the knife overall, you can see it does have sort of a, a curved arch to it. It uh, got some nice jimping on the back of the blade. Use your I finger. Um, your thumb, a good place to press into, you know, when you're holding it like this. And also if you want to use for finer cuts, 
or your index finger here. There's also jimping all along the inside of this, which seems like it'd be uncomfortable, but the way that the scales are scalloped out, it really isn't uncomfortable. It's actually really comfortable to hold. Um, the handles are a uh, glass reinforced nylon. Uh, some people, some companies I think will call them Zytale. Uh, someone will just call them nylon handles. So um, these are, you know, this knife came out in 2016, actually. So it's, you know, eight years old. And you can kind of, it, it's reflected in the materials that, uh, that are used in it. But there's, you know, like I said, the one that I had of these before, it lasted me forever. And I actually lost the knife. Um, I, it wasn't one that it broke on me or anything happened to it. I lost it. Now, I will get into um, some of the cons of this one as far as like, it's not one that you really are going to want to use for a lot of like prying. Um, there's a, I'll, I'll get into that. But um, for cutting, it, it works very, very well. It's very sharp out of the box. Um, and the steel that it's made out of it makes it really easy to sharpen. It does have a very good, very secure lock on it. Um, I haven't had, never had any issues with lock failure on it. Um, this one or the one that I had before. And the jimping on it make it fairly easy to make it fairly easy to activate. So some of the cons about the knife, I'm sure that you've already noticed. Ready? The, the scales and the pivot are all pinned in, so they are not, they're not at all adjustable, which is, you know, on most modern knives that we, that we see, even the lower end budget knives tend to have adjustable hardware. Um, a lot of scales will be pinned in, but usually an adjustable pivot. Neither one are adjustable on this one, although I will say there is no blade play at all. It is rock solid. You can see where it lines up on the spine there with that back lock. It is, I mean, it is in there like swimwear. Um, I know from using these before, the lock, I've never had a lock failure on it. Um, but getting into the locking system, I will say, I have cut myself, I don't know how many times with this knife. Because with the back lock, really the safest way to do it is to engage it, break the detent, and then close it with your other hand. I, I'm telling you that is the safest way to do it. It has a very stiff detent on it. And you, you really just have to feel it, but there's a real springiness to it right, right in through here. And you can kind of see how the blade springs there. And that's just, it has a very stiff second detent. And then when it locks in, it's very stiff. So when it's locked, it's really secure. But short of that, it, it's, it has a tendency to bounce. So sometimes when you're flicking it, if you don't give it enough flick, it'll, it'll, it won't break completely. Um, so, you know, over time, I know that that does loosen up and it gets uh, a little better to where it's not quite so tight. Um, the D10 is not pushing back so hard. But, you know, out of the box, they're, it's going to be really stiff. And like I said, it's so sharp <laughs> that, you know, there's, I, I don't know how many times I, I've closed it on, on my fingers, just drop the blade on them because of that back lock. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of wish it had a different locking system on it, but you know, for less than $20, I can live with it. Um, it does have a good clip. I think, um, it, it, it's not adjustable at all. It, it's like pinned into the scales. I imagine these two pins here are probably what holds it in, but it's pinned in there. You can't, um, it's not adjustable at all, but it's a very nice deep carry there. As you can see, when it's in your pocket, it, it, it's going to ride really low. So, um, you know, I, I always, I always thought it's kind of crazy how like a knife this inexpensive has a better clip on it than a lot of like really expensive knives, but the, the clip is really, really awesome on it. I, I like it a lot, but like I said, it's not adjustable at all. So um, I don't think that you can adjust it for right or left hand, but I don't know. Maybe you can. Is that an Allen? I can't tell if that, I can't tell if that's an adjustable like Allen screw there or if that's just pinned in. I'm not really sure. I think that's just pinned in there. It doesn't look like it's adjustable to me. It doesn't look like there's any um, sort of pattern on the inside where you could adjust it. But um, 
man, that would be cool if that was adjustable. You could take that out and then you could just flip the pocket clip. Hmm. I'm going to have to check that with an Allen key. Um, I will check that and I'll add it in the video. Um, I don't have an Allen key here with me at the bench. Um, so I, I will check that and I'll add it in um, towards the end of the video if that actually does work. And I'll, I'll, let you, I'll, I'll update you guys on that. Guys, I, I had to check this out for myself. <clears throat> and this is crazy. So this knife that's less than $19 has a reversible pocket clip and I've owned two of these and didn't know that until I just recorded this video on my little Eklund uh, combo Allen wrench here. This is a 564 Allen key. And if you loosen that, you can take the clip out and reverse it. And as you can see, I have it reversed on the knife now for left hand carry. So I had to pop back in and, and put that in the video for you guys. That is crazy to me that, that this knife that's less than $20 has a reversible pocket clip. And it's also crazy that I had one for all this time and didn't know it. Anyway, I'll let you get back to that. But um, like I said, with that lock, you got to re be really careful because it will drop on your fingers um, and it can cut you. And, and like I said, this one has cut me. Well, not this one in particular, but the old one that I had has cut me plenty of times. I probably have some scars on my fingers from where it has gotten me. Um, but anyway, you know, those are some of the cons of it. Like I said, the, this knife came out in 2016. There it goes, it bounced. See, you see how that you really have to give it a flick and, and kind of a little momentum there to, uh, to break past the detent. So, um, you know, like I said, once it's open and locked, it's locked, but uh, it does take a little bit to get it there. So just, you know, be aware of that. <clears throat> But you can kind of see the fit and finish on it. Everything is really, um, you know, all the lines, everything lines up really well with it. It looks like the tolerances are really good. Um, and like I said, even with that one that I had years ago, I didn't really have much issues of the pivot loosening up. I will, I will admit over time it did loosen up a little bit, but it never loosened up to the point where it affected the lockup on the knife. So um, th that's why I think this, this knife... Um, Oh, and the thumb studs. Yeah, the thumb studs on it are great. Uh, it's got really good, really good thumb studs on it. Easily deploying. Um, you can pocket deploy this one too. You know, you catch these on the edge of your pocket. It will deploy. You have to give it a pretty hard push to get it to do it, but uh, it will. I wanted to give you guys um, some of the overall specifications on the knife. So uh, we're looking at a uh, three and a half inch blade. Um, overall length, it says it's eight inches. I'm going to say it's just a little shy of that, even with the pocket clip. It's uh, about seven and seven eighths, it looks like to me. Um, these are available in a Tanto or a clip point. This one, of course, is the Tanto point. And again, you know, I mentioned it before. It does have a flat grind, a flat grind to the tip here, which makes it good for uh, piercing and penetrating. And then this hollow ground back here helps this edge come to just a really, really sharp point and it makes it very good for cutting. And then the recurve is very good at pulling material into there. And I'll do some cutting tests with it here in a second and show you. Um, it's a, like I said, it's almost eight inches overall. Um, the one biggest drawback to this one to me is the steel. It's a 5CR13 MOV steel. So low grade steel for sure. Um, some people, you may not have ever even heard of that steel before. It's a, it's an older sort of lower grade, like the, uh, 8CR13 or 9CR15 MOVs. Um, 5CR13 MOV can also be known as 5CR15 MOV. So if you've ever seen that before, it's the same steel. It's the equivalent of, uh, according to some research that I did, it's equivalent of a 420HC or an OS6 steel. So it's an older version, um, the CRMOV, you know, it means uh, chrom chromium, let's see, what is it? Chromium, molybdenum, uh, um, vanadium, I think. And uh, it's just sort of a blended hybrid steel basically is what it is. Um, it's known to be pretty soft. It's got a 54 to 57 uh, rating on the HRC scale. So, you know, I do know that the one that I had before, I did have to sharpen it. 
um, but I didn't have to sharpen it a whole lot and it held an edge. It seemed to hold an edge really well. Um, a softer steel is going to have a tendency to just sort of, um, it won't chip off and break like a harder steel will under hard use. It'll just tend to wear away. So, you know, that that's sort of the trade off there with the lower grade of steel is that it's going to be soft and really easy to keep sharp and keep to like a razor's edge. Um, but it, it won't be as durable as, you know, like your, your harder tool steels or things like that. So to me, that's the biggest drawback on this. But again, this is a knife that I would take and throw in, um, I take it, throw in a bug out bag, throw it in like a secondary pouch or like a backup knife. It would be perfect for that because if you lost it, you know, you're, you're losing like, you know, $19 as opposed to losing like a $50 knife or something. So and that's really where I think this would fit in perfectly, and uh, I think it would be a great knife for that, actually. I wanted to show you a couple of size comparisons because it's kind of hard to tell on the screen, you know, the size of the knife. So, um, as always, we'll look at it uh, against the Benchmade Bugout. You can see really close overall in size to the Bugout. The blade's a little bit longer. Um, Spyderco Para 3, again, it's a little bit bigger. You know, these are uh, about a three inch, and then this one's just a little bit longer than those. Um, I wanted to show you against a slightly bigger knife. This is the Concept Integra. Um, I just did a review of this one a little while back, and uh, it's pretty close to the size of that one. Um, and then also, we've got the Remet Wild Species. Again, it's a little bit closer in size to these. It, it, it's falling more into that uh, mid to larger range of the EDC category. Um, this is a Microtech MSI, just for comparison. You can see it's not quite at this big, huge size, um, but it is, uh, you know, again, it, it's quite a bit bigger than, than a, a bug out is going to be, you know. Um, one of the most incredible things to me about this knife is it weighs in at 2.4 ounces. Yeah, that's right. 2.4 ounces. So, you know, the ratio that they like to look at is an inch for or an ounce for every inch of blade. And this one blows that ratio out of the water. It is a very lightweight knife, um, but it's very well balanced towards the center there, right where the um, this kind of finger choil is. So it's got a great feel to the hands. It's super lightweight, which, again, I think it makes a great bug out bag um, or even just an everyday carry. If you don't like to carry a super expensive knife to work, this is a great work knife to carry, um, you know, because you could buy two or three of them. And if you lose one, break one, just replace it with another one for, you know, less than $19. Again, I'm going to put a link on here if you want to grab one, because to me, I think it's a good deal. I, I would recommend them. Uh, this is a knife that I have bought twice. You know, like I said, I had one years ago that I, I loved it. It really kind of got me into EDC knives and um, I lost it and I was just heartbroken over it. And even after I got into like better knives, after I had a bug out, you know, after I had um, quite a few of the other nicer knives, I still just, it was sort of like a nostalgia thing for me, I guess. But anyway, once I got it back into the uh, collection, I was happy. So, uh, Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about the SOG Traction Tanto. If you've had any experience with this particular knife or, or any SOG stuff, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Oh, wait. I didn't do a cut test. We got to do a cut test. Yeah. Um, but like I said before, this, this knife uh, came out in 2016. And uh, right now I've got... Uh, a, a link where you can pick it up. You can pick one up for less than $19. It is razor sharp, guys. Out of the box. This is one that I've actually carried around and used a little bit. It is sharp, sharp, sharp. Okay? It's a confetti maker. I'm telling you. Um, Again, you know, the blade might need a little more over time. It might need a little more you know, upkeep and care than uh, something that's a harder type of steel, but you can get it to just an absolute razor's edge fairly easily. So, I mean, you can see it, it putting minimal pressure here and it is going right through this cardboard, no problem. So yeah, it is just super sharp. 
very, very sharp right out of the box. So again, this is a knife that I could highly recommend, especially at the price point. Um, the materials might be older. It might be a little bit of compromise as far as the steel. The handle materials really is not even that much of a compromise to me because um, the the uh, glass reinforced nylon handles are are very sturdy. They've got a good texture, good diamond texture to them, and this jimping here, and then the way that they're scalloped out, they're ergonomically it's a very comfortable knife. So um, yeah, all in all, the SOG Traction Tanto is a knife that I would recommend uh, for someone who is just getting into EDC. This is going to be like your first. You know, you kind of want to see if you like carrying a knife every day. Um, if you want to get into EDC gear and knives, and this is a great entry level knife, I would say. Um, and even for someone who has some nicer knives, sometimes this is the knife that I reach for and, and carry around all day. I, I, I like it, you know, I, and it works. That's the thing. I think sometimes we get too caught up in this whole thing about, Oh, you know, it's got to be this kind of steel. It's got to be this or it's got to be that. Um, and really all that stuff is not the end all be all. Um, this is a, a tool that's made to cut things. And this performs that task very well for less than $20. And they do come with a limited lifetime warranty. I'm not sponsored by SOG in any way, um, but I do have an Amazon affiliate link that I'm going to put up here for you. If you want to pick one up for yourself. Again, this is one I'm going to recommend to you guys. Just grab one, throw it in your bug out bag and forget about it. It'll be there when you need it. Um, you know, don't really know what else to say about it. Cuts great, carries great. Um, you know, so like I say, always be caring. And remember, the best gear is the gear you have on you. Average Gear Reviewer, I'm out of here. Average Gear Review. But the best gear is the gear you have on it.